Hi everyone, I'm Gabriel Zamora, and thank you for watching. This video is definitely something I didn't think I was gonna upload, if I'm being quite honest. It's something that I feel like I need to upload now because there's certain apologies that I have to give, especially on video, and there are certain things I want to further explain. I have now filmed this. This is my third time filming this. The reason why is because the first two times, I feel like I, I was able to vent. I was able to really just let out my emotions and say how I felt, like, and just lay it all out on the line. And they were really long videos. And I'm like, you know what? This isn't about just my emotions. It's about me just talking about what happened and clarifying certain things and as to why certain things were done and kind of more of a backstory behind it. The first apology that I owe that I definitely wanted to make sure was in this video at the very beginning is to y'all, my audience, because I was the person that I didn't want to be and it was being negative, being petty and bringing negativity into a world that didn't need it. And for that, I'm truly sorry. And I know I've let y'all down because I let myself down. That's not who I should be. I started doing YouTube because I wanted to spread happiness and love and positivity and acceptance and just laughter. Like I wanted people to have fun because that's how I looked at YouTube. I looked at it as like, this is so much fun. It's a great escape. It kind of takes me away from any stress that I have. Or if I'm just like bored and I just want something to entertain me, like that's what I loved about YouTube. So the fact that I wasn't that, I'm truly sorry because that's not what I should be doing. And for that, I will take full accountability and I'm sorry. And moving forward, I don't want to be like that. And I will work my hardest to not be like that. The second apology that I owe is for an old tweet of mine that resurfaced from 2012. I don't want to give you excuses as to what my train of thought was. Just know that it was ignorant and it was stupid and it didn't come from hate. I know a lot of people on the internet have said that I am a racist based on that tweet. I ask that before you say those words, you now take time to realize what that means because I have taken time to realize that just putting out ignorance isn't going to help a situation because I've done that. So for that, I'm truly sorry and I've learned from it and I hope that my actions since then have shown y'all that I've learned from it and I've better educated myself. I want to link two videos down below just to further help the situation if one is still not fully cleared on it. One is just the backstory on how that word has come about and how it's developed over time. And a second video that I really respect is an author explaining why that word isn't for other people. And I've respected it since, but I feel like this video is very straight to that point and it's clear and it's concise and I totally agree with what's being said in that video. I'll link that down below and just know that I understand that it's not my word and I've understood it ever since I, I was educated back then. And I know it's not my word and I'm truly sorry that people still use that word and think that it doesn't have certain negative connotations. And I'm sorry that I fed into that at one point in my life. I was ignorant and I was stupid and I take full accountability and just know that I'm sorry, I'm still sorry and I will keep saying I'm sorry. For that, I'm, I truly am sorry. And the third apology that I do owe on camera is to Jeffrey. I'm sorry just for everything, not just for the tweets, not just for the photo, just for it all, just for allowing myself to create an image of someone based on what others were telling me. And it's not fair because I wouldn't want that for me. So I want to go on camera and say that I'm truly sorry to you, Jeffrey, because what I did wasn't intended to be bullying, but I know now that it came across like that. And I totally respect that and I'm sorry for that. I wanna talk about the tweet now. And I have certain things that I've written down that I want to clarify on. I don't wanna edit this video, so I just wrote everything down in my notes of things that I wanna hit on. So 
Let's explain, well, let me explain the photo, the tweet. So the photo context was just that, a recreation of Kylie's birthday photo. It wasn't taken in a sense to bash anyone, to try to disrespect Jeffrey. It wasn't taken like that. It was just taken to be dumb and funny. I then took it upon myself the next day to tweet the photo with that text. Nobody else saw this before I tweeted it. I just tweeted it. Okay. So when I tweeted it, just if you care to know, just a little backstory on it was I was hungover. I rarely drink, so I just said, I'm gonna drink this day. And I woke up hungover as hell, headache. There's no excuse, I'm just saying. This is the mental space that I was in. So I was irritable. I was like just cranky. And then I'm seeing certain things online about Jeffrey doing this to my friends. And I'm like, okay, they. I just keep hearing about this person and I keep hearing this and I keep hearing that. And I'm like, why is someone who's so successful being so petty? That was my train of thought in that moment. And I'm like, you know what? Let me be shady on the internet. I will, I'm one of the people that will, if I'm shady, I will own it. Because just don't be shady and be like, oh no, it, it was an accident. No, like if you're being shady, own it. And I was being shady. I was being petty in that tweet. And I tweeted it, nobody else knew. So I have, I just wanna go on timeline. When did everybody else find out? Everybody else found out, well, I started to get likes and I started to get a retweet or like a response. And then Nikita calls me and she's like, what was that tweet? Like, are you okay? Like, what's wrong? Like, what's, what's going on? And I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of this pettiness. I'm tired of this. And I explained it and she's like, okay, just so you know, it's very clear as to who you're trying to be petty towards and be like in that sense. And I'm like, okay. She's like, okay, just so you know. And I'm like, okay. So when we leave the hotel, we get into a bus to go to a pool party. And 10 minutes into the bus ride, it's brought up. So what happened on Twitter? And I'm like, you know what? I'm just tired of this person constantly doing this to y'all because I keep hearing he does this, he, he does that, he does this, he does that. He's such a malicious person. He's so mean, he's this. I keep hearing these things and I'm like, I'm like, I'm fed up. I'm fed up. I keep absorbing all this negative, all this negativity and I'm finally fed up. Like I'm over it. But this is also someone who's never done anything to me, never done anything petty to me. So I just finally had it. And it's like, okay, well, just so you know, it looks like, you know, people are starting to like speculate as to who it is. It's pretty clear. Like it's really clear. And I'm like, okay, like, and I made even more tweets, tweets that I definitely fluffed up because I was like, you know what? I want to create a narrative and it's not fair. And I now realize how, that affects people because a certain narrative was painted about me in this whole process. And I'm like, you know what? That wasn't fair. And one shouldn't be doing that. Try to make someone seem some type of way to try to get people on either your side or try to see something some certain type of way. One should never try to tell people what to think or what to see or anything. People should be able to do that themselves. So, that's when they're like, okay, well, like certain hate starting to pop up. We get to the pool party and other, during that bus ride, other things were being talked about, other negativity. And we get on the, we get to the pool party and we, I'm still seeing tweets. I'm still seeing more and more and more things come up. And it's like becoming a lot, like even for me, like I know, I know I started it. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take full responsibility for it but I, it's like, it's a lot. So during that process, Nikita comes up and she's like, hey, like, just so you know, sir, like, it looks like we all did this. Like, it looks like all four of us were in on this and it looks like it's, like we're bullying him. And I'm like, oh crap. And they're starting to get a bunch of hate because of my tweet. And I'm like, oh crap, like, this isn't fair for me to pull someone into this. And I fully took responsibility and I apologize to my friends. I'm like, hey, I'm really sorry because I drug you into this mess and I'm bringing you into this mess. 
And it was like, oh no, it's fine, it's fine. We're, we'll get through this, we're in it together, it's fine. I apologize to Laura, I apologize to Manny, and I'm like, I'm sorry. And it was very much the narrative of, it's just really bad timing. So it wasn't, it's not fair that you try to make it seem like we hate him. It was, it's just really bad timing because of this docu-series and everybody's on his side. And in my head, I'm like, well, if you feel some type of way about someone, irregardless of when it is, is it, irregardless of when it is, regardless of when it is, you should still feel that kind of way. But I'm like, okay, you know what? It's true. I'm going to just listen and take that and allow people to speak. And if they're saying that and this is how they feel, that's fine. I then go to Laura and I'm like, hey, I'm really sorry. I don't know what to do in this situation. I want to somehow start making this better. What do you think I should do? And she's like, do you mind deleting that photo? Because even I agreed, there was just a lot of accusations about her family. A lot of just false accusations about her family. And then it started to, people start saying certain things about certain people. And it was like, is this true? Wait, is this true? I was seeing those responses. And I'm like, okay, I totally agree. I'll delete it. She's like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll delete it. I'm taking full ownership. This is my fault. I know what I started. And I, I want to make this better. That's why I deleted that tweet. Because Laura asked me after I offered, how do I fix this? Let that be clear. So then... Let's see. Everything was all right after that. And why well, I took it down. Okay, cool. Then we went to another pool and that's where we started to hang out. That's when my old tweet came up and I voiced it to my friends. It's like, oh crap, like there's now an old tweet of mine coming up and I'm being painted out to be as racist. And I'm like, I want to explain this because I've learned from this and I want to apologize to anyone who's being affected and I want to be able to explain this just a little bit further. So they were aware, I created my own apology, I wrote it down, I wanted to make sure that it was concise and I tweeted it. It was, it was my truth, it was me apologizing for it, me owning up to it, I know what I did, it came from my social account. I changed it on Instagram because I was like, oh, this is inappropriate but it had tweeted it out as well. So I'm like, okay, just know that when you put something out on the internet, it remains on the internet. The reason a lot of people were like, you're so stupid, why didn't you delete this? Just so you know, I've deleted that tweet twice, not out of like, oh my God, like I don't wanna ever get caught. No, because I learned from it and I was like, oh wow, like this shouldn't be on there. Even before I started social media, I looked at all my tweets. I was like, could anything be taken as inappropriate? Because I'm not a malicious person. I've never gone out of my way to try to bash someone in a racial way or just in like a petty way in that sense. So I'm like, this tweet will haunt me. I know it will because I've tried deleting it and it won't go away. And that's fine, I'll fully own up to it, I've fucked up. So everyone was like, you'll get, it's fine, we'll get through this, right? Then that night I go to my hotel, I decide not to go out, I'm like, this is just too much. I'd rather just go to sleep, we're leaving the next day. Our car comes for us to take us to the airport at like, six or seven a.m. And I'm like, you know what? I should just pack, just take a shower, decompress. And I was looking at comments and I was starting to like delete stuff and block stuff because I'm like, this is, this is becoming a lot. Like it's a lot. So then the next day we're leaving and we're traveling back. 14 minutes, okay. I'm trying to like keep this short. So then we come back, we start going to the airport. I get onto the bus. I'm still not aware what's really going on with everybody else, but Nikita's like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm fine. And she's like, okay. Well, like, there's, like, just so you know, they're starting to bring up like tweets on everybody. Like they're bringing every, like old things of everyone up. And I'm like, like that's, I didn't want all this to happen, but when you put out negativity out into the world, just understand that it will give it back to you. What the energy that you put out is what you receive. So I'm now trying to focus on putting positivity out and I'm learning from that because I've always been like that. So I don't, I regret that I allowed myself to become negative. And I'm like, okay, 
So we have a layover in Amsterdam and then it's two hours and I'm like filtering comments and I'm like, this is too much. Like this is a lot. Like it's, it's now exploding and this is before it all. And I'm like, it's becoming a lot. And I'm like, it was, it was taking a real toll on me. And if I'm being honest, I was trying to just become numb because it was, it was a lot. Like I didn't want to think, I didn't want to feel anything. And I've had moments of just sadness and that just kind of like took me back. And I know that I started this, so I'm taking full accountability. But in that moment, that's just how I felt. I wasn't really talking. I wasn't trying to interact with anyone. I'm just like, this is just, it's a lot. Like it's a lot. So we then get on our flight back to the US, back to LA. And I just decide to go to sleep. And I'm like, just try to try to sleep this off or like try to like decompress, like go to sleep, just go to sleep. And I slept for the majority of the flight and I wake up probably two hours before we land. And 15 minutes into it, my friends come up to me. And the conversation is led, and I'm gonna be honest, the conversation is led by Manny. Laura chimes in every once in a while, Nikita didn't say anything. And I was just watching it all, I'm assessing everything. I'm like, okay, like what's, what's going on? The conversation is had of, hey, just so you know, it's becoming a lot more. And I'm like, okay. And we've been talking to our managers and our PR team, and we've just been thinking of a PR way to handle this. And I'm like, okay. And they have recommended that you take full accountability for the photo, you apologize for the photo, and you apologize to us for us not being involved. And I'm like, okay. Okay, cool. I tweeted it. Let's not go online. It's my Alexa. Calling with Alexa is not- Stop! So, sorry about that. <laughs> um, so I don't like that it seemed that I was the only one who thought this. I don't like that it was like, oh, Gabriel, you're gonna take full accountability. Cool, I did tweet it, but let's not try to make it seem like other people didn't really think these things. So I'm like, okay. Cool, but I will take full accountability. I will take that. I, if I up, I will take full accountability. So it is then you're gonna have to apologize first. This is all Manny. Laura's like chiming in, but one of the parts that kind of annoyed me was I wasn't given the respect of being looked at in the eyes while this is being had while I'm being told what to do. So I'm like, I'm starting to see these things. I'm like, okay, read people's body language. I'm staring at him and I'm not, it's just blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, cool. You're gonna have to take full accountability. Your apology is gonna have to go out first. So I would start working on it. And based off of your apology, this person goes next, this person goes next and I will be last and we all get, we'll all gauge kind of like what the other one needs to fix. And I'm like, okay, if you're sorry, you're sorry. Just put it out there. I don't, I don't, I don't understand why it has to be like this, 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 and this. No, like why are we, why, why are we setting up others apology for success? If you're, if you're sorry, just apologize and be sorry. So I'm like, okay, cool. It sucks because I, I felt like it was like, okay, like, cool. Like I'll take full accountability and I guess I'll be the person who hates him online. And I'm the only one who thinks this. That's fine. I know it. Uh, and these are my friends and you need to do right by them. So when I start heading home from the airport, I get nauseous in the backseat on my phone for too long. I'm already nervous. I'm anxious. It's a lot. I don't even want to look at my phone. I want to look straight forward and I just want to not throw up in this situation. And I get a text message of, from Manny, hey, how are you doing? Are you okay? I just see it and I'm like, I can't even respond. Like, it's just, it's a lot. So I'm like sitting there. It's like a 45 minute drive. Almost by the end of it, I get a text message of, hey, I really, hey, we really need you to put out this apology because it's a storm for everybody else, Gabby. And I'm like, wait, didn't you just text me wondering how I am? 
you don't hear from me. And then it's, hey, we need, cool, okay, interesting. I'm not texting you back because your headspace wasn't to see if I was good. It was to see when am I putting this out? Cool. So I come home and I write my own apology. I wrote my own apology, just so y'all know. I wrote it. Yeah, there was a revision, so I wouldn't mess up, but the only thing that was added was me attacking somebody else that didn't deserve it, who was part of the Ipsy community. That person definitely didn't need for me to attack them the way that I did. I was angry and she just stated an opinion. It was a little bit sassy, but it was her truth. And I respect it. But in that moment, I attacked. I didn't care, I just attacked. And she did deserve an apology. And I was like, you know what, that's true. All the other apologies, apologizing to Nars, apologizing to Ipsy, apologizing to my friends, apologizing to y'all, to my community, to the beauty community, was me writing that out. So, Laura put out her apology first because she, she didn't want to wait. She wanted to apologize and I respected that. Then I even had called her and I was like, hey, like, I don't know, like, should I be doing a video? Should I be putting text out? I don't know what to do. And it's like, an apology is an apology. It, you don't, don't feel like you have to do something so that people can understand it. An apology is an apology. As long as you are apologizing and you're sincere about it, it's an apology. And I'm like, okay. And I cried and I was like, I fucked up. Like I, I did, I caused this for you as well. I caused this for me. And she, and we cried and I put on my apology and I went to sleep. That is everything with that, with the photo and my apology. What happened next was where I got upset that I was being painted in a different type of way. So first, Maddie's apology wasn't an apology because there wasn't an, an I'm sorry in there. His initial quote tweet of mine. I wake up that Tuesday and I, I get a notification that he had quote tweeted me. And I'm like, wait, what? Okay, let me go to it. Thank you for owning up to it and all these things. I'm like, excuse me? So I screenshot it because I'm like, wait, am I crazy? Thank you, Gabby, for speaking up. We took that photo with the intent of recreating Kylie's 21st birthday picture with her sisters. True. The reason I liked it was because it was a photo of the four of us being silly the night before. I didn't read the caption as I had been running around. He was in his hotel, just so you know when he was liking and responded to it. Maybe he was running around his hotel room. That might be the case. But you can't tell me that you didn't see a you didn't read that tweet. It was a short sentence and it starts with a curse word and it's the photo of us four. You're just gonna like something and respond to it? No, 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 no. That's, no, that's not what we're gonna do. And then once I was notified about the caption from you all, I removed my like and asked Gabby to take it down as the photo was supposed to be a fun recreation and nothing more. I wasn't asked by him to take it down. When I said earlier, I asked Laura, how would you like me to better these things? That's why I took it down. Let that be clear. I would, so that's why I'm like, why are you now creating this narrative? The same thing you do in every situation. If we're keeping it a hundred, let's keep it a hundred. You know, you feel these things. Let's keep it a hundred. You feel these things. Somebody else does too, okay? Other people do too. So don't act like, Oh no, like I, this, no, 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 you feel that. So let's not paint it out to be like, I'm the one. Cool, no, 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 okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm getting emotional, right? So when I read that, I'm like, messy can never help themselves. When you're messy, you remain messy. So not only are you being messy in your quote tweet, let me go look at what you've been liking and what you've been responding to. So why am I seeing, of course you didn't read the caption. It was all fun and games until it backfired on the four of you. It absolutely was not at all. It was childish and I'm too grown for that, honestly. You're too grown? Too grown for what? You constantly talk about him. You constantly say all these things. You constantly use people. Let's look at track records. Let's look at track records. I don't have bad blood with anybody. Maybe there's one person that I, and me and her have an understanding of, we don't with each other, but let's keep it respectful. 
That's it. She's not in this community. So why are you the one who constantly keeps burning bridges and using people, but you're too grown? No, you can't, you say worse. Let's keep it a hundred, you've said worse. So my tweet that kind of set it all off was, no, 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 Manny, stay the out of it and, I th and think about who your friends are. He drug you down, did a half-assed apology and no one is buying. Trust me, it's been an eye-opening 24 hours is his response. I looked at other tweets he was liking. I wouldn't stay friends with someone that put me in a bad position and created all this drama. Why are you liking this? Yeah, I may have started this, but let's not act like you don't feel like this. If not worse, because I've heard you say worse. Because at 26 minutes, my camera shuts off at 30 minutes, I'll have to, I'm just checking. So I'm like, interesting. Let me go look at if anybody else is being shady right now. I go look at Nikita, no. Because real friends don't throw other friends under the bus even by throwing that kind of underlying shade. There's multiple tweets that he liked. So I was like, cool. So then Laura's responding to people. Me, Manny, and Nikita didn't have any part in the tweet Gabriel posted. We asked him to take it down and he did. What do you mean we? I asked you, how do I better this? And you said, can you take that tweet down? And I said, yes. Let's not ask like I was told to do anything. Let's not act like that. Then she says, I did not ever like or comment the photo. Manny did without reading the caption and within a few seconds, he removed his comment and like. Okay, so you're defending someone and let's keep that clear. She did defend him and was, she didn't have to say, Manny did, but he took it down just so you're aware. Since your apology has gone out, where is he on this? Because that's your best friend. Okay, cool. So I'm looking at all these tweets and I'm like, wow, really? Like, okay, we're gonna play this narrative? Cool. If Y'all are out for yourself and you're thinking, how do I better this for myself? Let me say face for myself. And you're probably thinking, well, Gabriel, you're probably reading into it. Maybe they didn't see those tweets or maybe they didn't fully read or maybe they're like, just kind of like, it's too much for them. Just so you know, I know these people a lot better than a lot of you do. Let's, let's keep it a hundred. In the sense of, I see how they move. Maybe I don't know what they did on their fourth birthday. Maybe I don't know everything about their family. Maybe I don't know certain things. But when I see them move, I am aware of what kind of person they are. And to hear them constantly complain, uh, well, this person liked this tweet and it was shady about me. Constantly. They've been aware for years that liking something shady is obvious. That responding something shady is obvious. They're creating that narrative and it's obvious. These are my friends. I saw them. I see how they move. So it's not me just misinterpreting things, over reading things. No, because there was a lot of people online saying, wait, what? did y'all just throw him under the bus? Like, wait, didn't y'all also have a falling out with him? Why is Gabriel the sacrificial lamb? All these people are saying it. So I'm like, okay, I'm not crazy. I am, I am feeling these things with some reason. Oh, it's at 20 minutes. Let me... Okay. Let me... No. So, then I had to think, you have to now, not in the sense worry about yourself, but realize what it is you want to do. What feels right for you. No longer, okay, let me not like certain things. Let me not do certain things. Let me remain hush-hush so it doesn't add to the fire. Let me not add fuel to the fire. So now I'm like, you know what? I wanted to apologize to Jeffrey. That is an apology I wanted to create, to give. And I literally text, once I realized these things, I'm like, you know what? You should be apologizing to him. Even if you've been kind of made out to feel like you shouldn't, or that isn't your friend, or this isn't a good person, you should apologize to this person because you did attack them online. You should apologize to them personally first. So I, wrote out a text, an apology, and it was a long one, and it went through, and I got a response back. My number wasn't blocked. So there was a conversation had, we, sp we spoke on the phone, and I apologized for everything, just allowing myself to create 
an image of someone in my head in a negative light based on what I was being fed because it wasn't fair for me to do that to anyone, to hear all these things about someone and never have experienced them myself, but still think these things about that person. So I'm like, I'm sorry for that. I'm just sorry for a lot of things. A lot of clarity came from that conversation. A lot of things made a lot more sense once you heard, once I heard the other side of the story. I thought my friends are gonna tell me the truth. That's not always the case. So when he explained situation that I thought, why is he being irrationally angry? It made sense why he was mad in this situation and this situation. It made a lot more sense that I'm like, am I, am I being lied to? Why? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So I then tell him, I'm like, I would, I personally would love to apologize online publicly to you. I'm not gonna say I spoke to you. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna tell anyone. I would just like to do that. Do you mind if I do that? And he's like, no, I totally respect it. Thank you for that. So when I created my apology, it took me 24 hours. I wanted to sleep on it. I still wanted to apologize to him publicly, but I wanted it all to kind of process in. What do you want to do next, Gabriel? When I woke up, I was like, you know what? There's a certain individual that I do need to cut out of my life because it's always just been toxic. A lot of the negativity around you and around your friends has been due to this one person. There's the same factor in all these negative situations around your life because I've had a lot of friends and there's always these negative things going on and that seems to be the remaining factor and that's Manny. So I'm like, you know what? You're not that cool with this person. If I'm keeping it a hundred with y'all, it was an, that friendship was this weird narrative of after he's had all these falling outs and so has she, Laura, we're just, we don't really have friends. Let's just all constantly hang out. And I'm thinking, oh my God, my friends want to constantly hang out. Like this is so cool. Like they're some of the top people in the beauty industry. And it's fun to just hear inside perspective from somebody else. And these are also people who understand it. I'm growing and I'm new to this. So it's cool to just hear like inside tips and tricks. Like Laura has helped me so much with my YouTube channel and my social media in general, just giving me advice, giving me tips, giving me, she's like, my home is yours. Whatever you want to do. Do you want to film? Like, what do you like anything? So that's her and Nikita have been the only ones that have really helped me. I'm not saying Manny didn't, but he gave me a link to where I could get Final Cut Pro, like text and stuff. Cool. There's been always like a, hey, you should be posting more. And I'm like, okay, 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 okay. Like I do want to post more, but I've always been, yeah, I'm not consistent when it comes to posting, but I'd rather post something that I love as opposed to me thinking I have to post. And I feel like that's where I was going crazy. Me personally, I'm not saying it was because of anybody else because I was like, I'm going crazy. I feel like I have to post like two to three times a week on YouTube and like every single day on Instagram and this and that. I have to post a particular time because these, this is what I'm hearing constantly. No, I don't. And that's why I was going crazy. That's the only thing he's really helped me with. So that narrative of we're all close kind of started to mess with me because I'm like, I don't know anything about him, really. And he doesn't know anything about me, but he's constantly hanging out with other people and having these close moments, but I don't, I don't get a hangout. I don't get a phone call. I don't get nothing. So I'm like, okay, cool. This is a person you need to cut out of your life. You've been wanting to cut them out ever since he threw Laura under the bus when Laura and Jeffrey had that falling out. He threw her under the bus. Let's keep it a hundred. Why is it that two people who were in the wrong with him, only one gets out alive? Behind the scenes, if I'm keeping it a hundred, I was done with him. I was like, are you serious? I see my friend and she is hurt. She is distraught. I'm getting emotional. I wanted to cut him off. It hurt because I felt like in that situation, I was backing up a friend that I felt was hurt. And then that friend then turns around and is buddy buddy. And then I get pushed aside and I'm like, wait, I, th I thought you were hurt. And that's why I was hurt as well. And then I was hurt that I was being kind of like pushed aside. And I'm like, what? Okay, cool. You can't be mad at someone's situation if they're not mad themselves. 
And that took time during that situation for me to process. But I'm like, okay, cool. We try to better that situation. It was talked over between me and Laura. But during that time, I did get an apology from Manny. I'm so sorry that it just looks like this and I've hurt y'all and I've hurt my friend. Cool, if you didn't throw her under the bus, why are you apologizing? Interesting. So when I wake up that day and I tweet out, I'm sorry, Jeffree Star, I go to his tweet, I copy and I paste what I also relate to. It has been an eye-opening 24 hours because when he tweeted that, the 24 hours that he was referring to was the flight and certain people's situations being come up, like his insensitive Snapchat. So, okay, cool. For me, I saw myself get thrown under. My narrative is being painted out as differently. I have apologized to someone that I needed to, and they have cleared up so much more for me. So the next day, I'm like, it has been an eye-opening 24 hours. I wanted that shade. You know why? Because as an audience, y'all see it. You see the shade. I knew, I've always been told you can manipulate the audience to think what you want them to, is that sentiment? Oh my God, this video is so long. You can paint it out to be some type of way. Cool. I want it to be done. I tweet it out. He's trying to contact me. I'm not responding. I'm like, I'm out. It felt good. It sounds dark, but it felt good to just cut someone off like that. I thought that cutting off a friend would be bad, but it felt good. And I didn't understand why, but further realizing it, it's like, that was a toxic person in your life. You shouldn't have been friends with this person. You shouldn't have been hanging out with this person, to be quite honest, because you don't really need each other like that. If, we're keep, if I'm keeping it 100, we didn't. So I'm like, okay, cool. So then I unfollow him. Of course, he freaks out because people are now catching on to it. And he then sends me a voice memo that he's outside my building. And it's like, hey, I'm outside your building. You can't come into my building unless I allow you and you're on a list. So of course he's not being let in. So I get a voice memo, hey, I'm outside your building. I don't know why I'm here. I just wanted to talk to you face to face. I know you must be going through a lot. We're all going through a lot. What do you mean we're all going through a lot? What are we all going through? Because it looked like I was, I was the only one going through it. Yeah, certain people were going through things as well, but I didn't tweet other people's things. My photo, I have now taken full accountability for. That tweet I've taken full accountability for. I have apologized to y'all publicly. What do you mean we at this point? Because y'all are liking shady things. It's no longer we. And then he apologizes for liking and responding to things that he misinterpreted. I'm tired of this, I misinterpreted this. Oh, I'm so sorry because of this. Oh, I'm so sorry, but it, it's, it's because of this. No, if you're sorry, you're sorry. Just keep it 100. Keep it 100 with me, and I will respect you. Yeah, even if you were like, hey, I did like some shady tweets about you. I'm kind of upset with you because you started that you shouldn't have, but even though we all feel like this, I was upset and I liked these tweets and I shouldn't have, I'm sorry for that. I would have respected that because you know, I'm like, you know what? Yeah, he shaded me, but he is keeping it 100. No, don't say you didn't reach. Don't say these things when I know how you move. I know how you work. No, we're not gonna do that. So I don't respond. I'm just, since then, I have, I tweeted that and I gave the respect of not doing anything more, not liking anything more, not tweeting anything, not doing anything, right? So, just seeing it all play out, now that I feel like, okay, I've apologized, I'm backing up because what I did wrong, everything I've apologized for, right? I'm contemplating a video, apologizing to my audience, and just that, just apologizing. Maybe like still taking blame for that photo and not really going into depth like I'm going in now. But to see someone go online and apologize to someone rightfully deserved, he did deserve to apologize to that little girl. But you're not gonna talk about anything else? You're not gonna apologize to someone that has helped you get to where you are? Even though you've played the, he offered it. He didn't do things for me. He didn't have to offer these things. 
This is someone who's already so successful and you're freaking out because you're like, I don't know where to go and I don't know what manufacturer to use and blah, 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 this, blah, 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 blah. And your friend is like, well, I mean, I can put in a good word for you in my place and I can give you these contacts. Don't act like this person didn't do nothing for you, okay? Because even though I, during that time, wasn't the biggest fan of Jeffrey, I always respected advice that he had given me. One of the biggest advice was, don't waste all your money. That's gonna be one of the biggest mistakes that you do coming into it, if I can give you any advice. I did that and I blew through my money and I wasn't saving anything. And it's true. I was in the beginning starting to blow money. I was like, oh wow, okay, that's true. I should be saving money. So I always respected that. And I respected certain things and certain critiques and certain advice he would give me. And I would say that and be like, he's a smart businessman. Maybe I'm not the biggest fan of him, but he's a smart businessman. I would say that. But don't go online and not apologize to the person who's helped you the most. The most. Because a lot of people have helped you. And I will always say who's helped me. I'm not gonna say it right here, but you can go to my previous videos. You can go to interviews that I've done and I give credit where credit is due. I'm not here today off of my own blood, sweat, and tears. So many people have helped me get to where I am and I give credit. So don't go online and that, give that boot type of video because yeah, that girl deserved to be apologized to, but then you're gonna apologize for an insensitive Snapchat that was brought up during this and you're gonna mention his name in the video and not apologize to him? Cool. But when Laura's apology came out and she was drugged through the dirt, drugged through the mud, because you got a lot of hate for not responding to that and she made sure to include it in hers, you weren't anywhere to defend your friend. But there's a tweet of her defending you at one point. There's your best friends. Trust me, that when someone with my friends, as y'all have seen, I go up to bat. But when I saw nobody was going up to bat for me, publicly, even though I had one friend in that group, help me behind the scenes, be like, hey, you did this tweet and it's bullying, but I am here for you and I wanna make sure that you're good. I had that one friend. Only one friend was aware that I have never dealt with this. This is a lot for a person to deal with. And that person's checking out on me because that's ride or die. So when you don't defend your friend online, even though you probably did the worst, to be quite honest, because you sucked that friendship dry and then you try to get out for like, get out safe. It, but this person, I remember got the biggest hit. So when he attacked her and you got out safe. Whose house did you go to right after that? To go apologize to. Let's keep it a hundred. I'm tired of this narrative being put out that someone is so sweet and someone is so good. When behind the scenes, I know so much more. And I'm going crazy because this image is being painted out and it's being well received as you're good. No, your friend was just drugged to the dirt. I know for a fact that Laura isn't a malicious person. Does she do stupid things? Yes. But I personally, in my experience with Laura, know that she's not a malicious person. But I'm not gonna go up to defend her because I, I didn't get no defense. You were liking shady things. I'm not defending you at this point. But your best friend isn't gonna defend you and is gonna allow all this while you get the biggest hit and you're losing the most? When in actuality, you didn't do as much as he did? Cool. It's been an eye-opening experience, if I'm being quite honest. This is a long video and I'm sorry it's this long, but it just, it's my truth. And it's, I know I'm venting a lot and I'm, I wanna just wrap it up at this point. I don't want to convince y'all on anything. Don't let me tell you how to feel. Don't let me tell you what to see. Allow others to show you who they are. Look at it all. Look at it all and really realize who these people are. Because I try to keep it 100. And I allowed myself to not. I made myself seem like I was like 
best friends and like all this and I did hate this person as well. No, I'm sorry for that. To myself and to y'all because oh, it's a lot, dude. Like it's a lot, it's a lot. It's a lot to just process in. I hope that this video put some clarity as to me and my truth and my experience. I know I vented a lot and I'm sorry for that. Um, it just, it's, it's just built up. And don't forgive me because I'm asking you, but just look at me moving forward and maybe you need a break from me and that's fine. But if in a month and two and six and a year, you come back and check on me, I hope that my actions have proven that I've grown from this and I've learned from this. And that's all I can ask for. If you no longer want to be a fan of me or be part of my social family, I completely understand that because I let myself down. So I know I let a lot of people down because I saw those comments of, I always thought you weren't gonna be petty or dramatic or problematic. That's one of the reasons why I was being so nervous and scared about this video, it's not because I was scared of anyone, it was because I was scared of looking as problematic when I didn't want to be like that. But all these things are going on online and it's all started from that one tweet. And I want to now clarify a little more from my side because there's a lot of assumptions out there as to, oh, he probably did this or, they were all in cahoots with that tweet or this and that. No, like I want to clear a lot of things up and I want to apologize to y'all because I was petty and I was negative and I allowed myself to be there. And I'm sorry for that. It's a lot. I'm still gonna take more time to just allow this to fully process in because I feel like I can't just click a switch in my head and be done with things. Sometimes the universe forces you to start a new chapter. Even if you think you're not ready, you have to move forward with it. And I have to move forward with this. And I know that I picked up in the past and I want to learn from this. And I want to take time to really reflect and just cleanse myself. And I've been talking to just friends that I haven't talked to in a while. I've been talking to family. I've just been really just assessing the whole situation and seeing where I went wrong, where I fucked up. And I'm sorry for that. Like I truly am that I'm not the best version of myself as of recently. I'm not. And I wanna take time to just realize that, allow that to sink in and see how I can better myself moving forward for me and for y'all. Because I'm not going anywhere. I'm not gonna just quit. I'm, I love what I do and thank you to y'all for allowing me to do this. It just feels good to say it. It truly does. To just put my truth out there. It just, I feel like weights just lifted. Okay. I don't want to further discuss this. I'm not gonna disable my comments. If there's any other advice you can give me when it comes to better educating myself, I would love to hear it. You can write that down online. I know I'll get a lot of hate still, and that's fine because this apology isn't for it to be accepted and for me to be the good guy again and for me to be liked again. It's for me to explain my side and hopefully certain people can see that this is my truth and this is me being honest. Oh my God, it feels good. Thank you.